This video tutorial explains writing to and reading from regular text files. You've seen a selection of Python's in-memory data structures, like sets, dicts and lists. Now you learn a first way of storing data persistent on disk. This allows you to keep your data when your program exits and to exchange the data with others. Advantages of plain text files are that they are easy to read with regular text editors like Kate, which I'm using here, and that you can compress them using standard algorithms like gzip. There's a lot of code which is actually not necessary for writing to files. This code just downloads a list of tutorial video titles that are available in my Python tutorial series. And uh, I'm not going through this at this moment because you're focusing on writing files. So what I do here is I download the list of video titles from my YouTube playlist and titles will then have a live list of available videos. And I want to write this titles list to a file called tutorialvideos.txt. To do so, I, I use the most Pythonic way of interacting with files and that's uh, using the with keyword here to use a context manager. That means here I open a file and make it available in the variable name f. And using this context manager here has the advantage that the, fi that the file will always be closed properly even if exceptions occur or anything goes wrong. I don't have to worry about trouble anymore. And the open built-in function takes the name of the file to interact with as first argument. Here I add a w that means this file will be written to and the standard encoding is set to UTF-8. Now within the context manager I iterate over my list of titles and for each of these titles I simply use the write function of the file object to write the title and then a new line character depending on your operating system. Let's look at what's in this directory. I have three files here, appending files, reading files and writing files. If I run writing files. There's a new file now called tutorialvideos.txt which is uh, the name defined here and I can read this file in Kate using Kate tutorialvideos.txt and that was downloaded right away. I'm closing this now and if I run my code again a file open with W will simply be overwritten so you need to be careful. Run the code again and open the tutorial videos file again and it's the same contents because it was written from scratch and not appended to. Alright, and one more important thing to note is that if you do not add an absolute directory position here then Python will write into the, in the current working directory. So if I change my working directory here now and I type Python 3 reading and writing text files writing files.py then the new file will be in this directory instead. So I'll remove this file and go back into what used to be clear my screen with Control L and do another ls. Now let's uh, move on to reading files. I don't need any code for generating some content here. I can just open the file directly with open tutorial videos.txt. I open it in read mode and set the encoding to UTF-8. Again I use the same uh, variable name f and now I can simply and directly iterate over the file. This is the advantage I don't have to read the file all at once which may be a memory trouble if the file is really 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 big. So I can just iterate and say for one line in the file after the other without ever having the whole file loaded in memory and in this simple case I just print the line and because the line does also include the new line character in the file I don't need a new line character in the print function so I use the end keyword argument to, to disable adding an additional new line in print. I'm running this now, Python 3 reading files and there it is, simply printed to the screen now. 
We can skip the R argument because that's the default. I'm saving this, run the example again, and it still works. And uh, <coughs> of course, we cannot uh, only print the, the list here, we can do many other things as well. For example, I can say uh, titles equals an empty list and read to this list of titles. So I say titles.append line and if I want to now I can say titles.sort and print the sorted list print titles save this and here you can see the second last video was what is open source and the last here is merge sort with Transylvanian Saxon German um, running this again now I simply print the list and the last tutorial now is what is open source explained in Lego. Finally, we're looking at appending files. I'm clearing my screen here again with Control L. Appending files means when you open a file and you write to it, you write to the end of the existing file or you can jump to other positions and interact like that. So, for example, if I want to add a new title to my tutorial series, and the new title is not yet available online. Here I just define it to Python 3 tutorial shiny new screencast. Now I open the tutorial videos file and add the A parameter for append. The encoding again is UTF-8 and what I do now is I simply write to the file as I would do when opening the file for writing. But now the file does not get overwritten but uh, this new title will be added to the end of it. I'm opening the file before it gets modified. So here in line 16 we have merge sort with Transylvanian Saxon German folk dance. And if we run this now, Python 3 appending to files, open it in Kate again, tutorialvideos.txt. Now the last video in a new line is Python 3 tutorial shiny new screencast. So that's how you can append to a file. In this tutorial you've seen how to interact with simple plain text files. You're now able to read from and write or append to such files. However, Python 3 offers a complete range of choices for disk-based data storage. For example, it allows to handle binary, XML, JSON and database manager files as well as SQL databases and serialized Python objects. You'll find some of these explained in later tutorials in this series. Enjoy!